Now, is it any wonder that the well-known writer Ashley Montague said, the good book? <laughs> the devil comes out of the Bible looking a lot better than God. In fact, you'd almost think the book was written by the devil about God. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let the women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. He's interpreting the Bible correctly. It's a sexist book. But you know, you think about it, uh, any book that will teach people that uh, sticks will turn into snakes, donkeys talked, a woman turned into a pillar of salt, an axe head floated, people rose from the dead, the sun went back on the dial, I mean, anybody believe that superstitious, silly nonsense or believe in anything? There's nothing too ridiculous. All you have to do is put it in what they think is a sacred book. Another problem with the Bible is that uh, some of the language is out of... Out of uh, what should I say? I have to pick my terminology well. I, say, I, I would say pornography, uh, pornographic. I'd probably say it's uh, certainly profane. I'm going to read some of the language from the Bible, and you'll realize why some people wanted to abandon Boston. A little gross. I'm not going to interpret these terms uh, because we're all adults and I think we can figure it out for ourselves. Ezekiel 23, 20, 21. Yes, she increased her harlotry and doted upon her paramours whose members were like those of asses and whose issue was like that of horses. Song of Solomon, my beloved put his hand by the hole of the door and my bowels were moved for him. <laughs> well, what I'd like to do is I want to read to you a list of the deeds, the acts, the statements that God made somewhere in the Bible. And I'd be glad to give a chapter and verse for any of these if anybody may doubt their validity. He does all of these. Now, the list is rather long, so I'm going to read it rather rapidly. He creates evil. Evil comes from the Lord. He deceives. He tells people to lie. He makes false statements. He rewards liars. He orders men to become drunken. He rewards the fool and the transgressor. He delivers a man, in this case Job, into Satan's hands. He mingles a perverse spirit. He's not omnipotent. He's not all-powerful. He causes indecency. He spreads dung on people's faces. He orders stealing. He makes false prophecies. He changes his mind. He creates, <clears throat> he creates evil. He orders the taking of a harlot. He kills people. He orders the killing of people. He has a temper. He's often jealous. He's not omnipresent. In some cases, he's not everywhere. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know all. He often repents. He practices injustice. He plays favorites. He sanctions slavery. He degrades deformed people. He punishes bastards for being illegitimate. He punishes many for the acts of one. He punishes children for their father's sins. He punishes a man for following his orders. He punishes people for hearing his words. He supports human sacrifices. He orders cannibalism. He demands virgins as a part of war plunder. He orders gambling. He requires an unbetrothed virgin to marry her seducer. He orders horses to be hamstrung. He sanctions the violation of the enemy's women. He sanctions the beating of slaves to death. He requires a woman to marry her rapist. He teaches war. He orders the cooking of food with human feces. He killed the righteous and the wicked. He intentionally gave out bad laws. He excused the sins of adulterers and prostitutes. He excused a murderer and promised him protection. He killed a man and refused to impregnate his sister-in-law. He aided rather than punished a swindler. He doesn't see off. He's often indecisive. He discovers women's secret parts. He breaks up families. He orders the killing of women and children. He killed over 50,000 people because a couple of them looked into an ark. Oh, isn't that terrible? He gives unlimited eternal punishment for limited sins, which is something I discussed earlier. And he violates his own laws. One of which is, thou shalt not kill. I know of nobody who killed more people in the Bible than God. In other words, it's a case of do as I say, not as I do. Now, can you imagine any being saying, yes, that's my book, that represents me, that's the way I am? Especially a supposedly perfect being. I can't think of a person in history with a worse record than that, and I'm including Adolf Hitler and Genghis Khan. To go even further, I can't think of very many good, honest, decent acts that God created or committed somewhere in the Old Testament such that you want to go up, hug him around the neck, kiss him on the cheek, and say, good job, well done, I'm proud of you. The devil 
comes out of the Bible looking a lot better than God. In fact, you'd almost think the book was written by the devil about God. <laughs> and for those Christians who peddle this book, I would say to them, what do you think God's going to do to you when he gets his chance? You presented that book as his book. You don't think he's going to want to take vengeance or get even, square things up? When I read the Bible's analysis of science, I often think of the story of the eight-year-old boy that uh, uh, <clears throat> came home from Sunday school one day, and uh, his mother says, well, Johnny, what would you learn in Sunday school? He says, well, Mom, they uh, told us about how Moses went behind the enemy lines to uh, rescue the Israelites and the Egyptians. And when they came to the Red Sea, Moses called for the engineers to build a pontoon bridge and they all crossed on the bridge and looked back and saw the Egyptian tanks coming. Moses radioed headquarters and with his walkie-talkie and he asked the bombers to be sent to blow up the bridge. And his mom said, Johnny, is that really what they told you in Sunday school? He says, well, not exactly, Mom, but if I told it their way, you'd never believe it. 